Hey everybody, it's time for the holidays and you've ordered a holiday box. Allow me to show you how to take care of this wonderful ribeye that we prepared for you guys. Things that you'll need. A sheet tray with a rack. Something of this order. Do you need a rack? No, but it's nice to let it drain. A little bit of oil or some sort of fat. Anything you got in your household. A thermometer of any kind. And of course, just a knife here. We have the uh, beef that's ready to go, vacuum sealed, and you can see that we've taken out all of the nasties that are inside there and glued that cap right back on there for you. Um, we're also going to reach into our box of goodies here, and you can see that there's an herb bundle, but there's also some butcher's twine inside of that herb bundle. We're going to take that twine out, and we're going to use that, as well as the steak seasoning. We'll be putting that right over here. I'm going to show you how to tie this bad boy up. Super simple way. We're gonna pull it right on out of this bag here. Put it right on top of our rack. The roast is gonna be sitting like this. And what we wanna do is we wanna tie this this way. Ready? So what I like to do is I just kinda of lift the roast up a little bit like so. And we're gonna tie a square knot. So um, I like to do a triple on this, so one, two, three, really helps it the cinch stay down. And then, by doing a square knot, you see how this, uh, it's been going this way, you wanna keep it going that way. So you drape the other one over, keep it going that same direction, and loop right on over, and there you have it. There's one, okay? I like to kinda cut nice and close to the knot. And then we start over again. You'll probably be able to get two to four of these on here, or three to three to four. You want to get three for sure. So one, two. We'll go down like so. This is just to help everything stay together as it roasts, makes it roast more evenly. And honestly, presentation-wise, when this thing comes out of the oven, people are going to be like, "Oh my God, this is exactly what I was expecting." So we'll go right down here again. One, two, and then come right down, cinch it up nice and tight. And then we'll keep that going, that same direction again. And there you go. We only need three, it looks like. You can squeeze a fourth one in there if you space them out a little differently, but regardless, this thing's ready for seasoning. So what I like to do, just hit it with a little bit of oil. Hit it with a little bit of butter if you want. You can rub it down. Um, this is just to help the seasoning stick to it. So it's nothing that crazy um, uh, important as to what you use. So now that it's all lathered up, you notice that I've kind of gloved up here. It's much easier. This is the steak seasoning. We want to be pretty liberal with this. We want to really kind of get that on there, kind of flip it to the side, do the exact same thing. We've definitely given you more than you possibly could need, so you can use it for another time as well. There we go. Love it. And you just keep on going until you get all the way around this roast. Last side looks like here. Yes. Kind of tap it into place. And for good measure, we'll just throw a little bit more on the top. Center it on this rack. This bad boy is ready to go. I pulled this out one hour before I started this process. Reason being, if you can actually get it closer to room temperature, it's gonna really speed up your cooking process. So preheated the oven at 325 degrees. I have it in a, um, in a convection oven. You could probably bump up to 350 easily if you have a still oven. The thing is, is we're not gonna cook this to a time because I don't know how your ovens work. I know how my ovens work and they're really strong. So we're cooking this to a temperature. We're gonna try to get this to the temperature of 105 degrees to 110. If you get it uh, temped out like at 105, that's when we're gonna jack our oven up all the way to like 450 if you have convection, maybe 500 even if you have a still oven or an oven that you see might, might think's a little weak. You really want it to be super hot. And we're gonna blast it for like 20 minutes at the very end just to get that crispy crustiness on the outside. And then that should bring our internal temperature somewhere in like the 118, 19, 20 range. And that's like a perfect resting temperature. It'll probably carry to maybe like 130 at most, maybe 126, 27, 28. But that's literally mid-rare going into medium which is exactly what we want. So basically, I'm gonna stuff this in the oven right now and I wanted to show you this process when we get back to the video. See you guys. Okay, 
it's time for the holidays. You've ordered a holiday box. We're gonna show you how to cook this thing. Uh, I have somebody special here with me. My lovely wife, Saroy, <laughs> and I are gonna cook dinner for you guys. We kicked the kids out of the house. Uh, we wanted to show you how to get this one done, and uh, it's actually uh, a little bit more interactive than the last one, but honestly, the results are fantastic. So, Saroy, my wife, are you ready to do this? Let's do it. All Wait. right, got y'all dolled up with a nice, yep, got y'all. sweater. You look great. <laughs> All right, so first things first, we have this wonderful Ron Burgundy ham that's in here. We're gonna actually cut this out of the bag and we're going to put it into our uh, uh, pot here. I have a big uh, La Crusade on right now that I'm going to get a little bit of water in here. It's uh, been heating up for us. Not a whole lot, just enough to coat the bottom. <coughs> Boom! So um, we're gonna actually cut this bad boy in half because it is quite large. Um, getting, getting a good bang for your buck. It's a whole ham um, and it is a carving ham. Uh, coming off the uh, quadricep of the pig. This is actually my favorite type of ham, my favorite kind of cut. Um, I'll give you a good look at it right here. Check this out. That. It's sitting in Ron Burgundy glaze. We're gonna go right into the pot with that. Like I said, I put about equal amount of that liquid in there of water, because we're gonna end up like kind of steaming it inside of here. There we go. Oh, don't every drop. There we go. All right. And then we're gonna cut this bad boy in half or into whatever kind of pieces you needed to get it into your pot. For me, we'll go right in half and I'll give you a kind of a cross section of this. Literally the best part of the ham. So we're going right in here. I think it's quite lovely. And then I'm gonna actually put a lid on there and just let that actually steam cook out We'll actually take all the drippings. I'm going to reduce it in this little pan here a little bit later. Um, in another pot, so uh, we are going to get the soup going. Sora, you see the soup over there? The, I see, so oh yes, here. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go right into here with that. Go ahead. While Sora's working on this, you'll notice that I have one, two, three saute pans out. We're going to go Brussels, Brussels, and the uh, roasted, here you go the roasted mushrooms in this pan here. We'll get to those a little bit later. Um, perfect. I like to heat up my pots uh, uh, before I actually put them in there, put the um, uh, soup in there, and I just put like another quarter cup, maybe a half cup of water, just to like kind of introduce um, this wonderful butternut squash soup that's in here. And I just have it on a medium heat here. And we're just gonna let this kind of take to that nice heat, and we're just gonna go on low heat now. Really low heat. And we're just gonna let that slowly heat up as we are cooking tonight, okay? There we go, perfect. Next thing's next. Let's just take a look at what we have over here. We have our gravy. This is basically a demi-gloss, Bob's special meat demi-gloss. Have a nice little pot uh, bowl for it with a, uh, um, a ladle, and then we also have our Brussels sprout kit. Our kit of Brussels sprouts, if you look, the Brussels sprouts are raw. We have a vinaigrette of uh, bacon, uh, sherry bacon vinaigrette. We're gonna roast these, um, but while I get some of this stuff going, I'm gonna have Saroy just set up a couple of easy ones. Um, right here we have the cake. We also have the, uh, the wonderful like pregame uh, shrimp cocktail. So you can see that you have your setup right here. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and get that going. I'll cut up your lemon. Potatoes, let's get these in the oven while we're, hang we're playing around. And then I'll get to some knife cuts and kind of teach you some of those things. So, uh, here's what we got going on with these potatoes, guys. They're already seasoned up nicely. Mm. Perfect. We do give you extra potato seasoning, just in case you want to put more on it. But honestly, the steak seasoning, um, I've already put on the steak, which we'll show you a video of that in just a second. Um, and there's a lot extra, and there's a lot of extra potato seasoning as well. Both good to keep around in case you want to do some more roasting of potatoes. These are already cooked all the way, so we're kind of reheating them. Uh, I'm going to put it in my oven at about 350 degrees, and that's a convection oven, so it's going to get roasting pretty quick. And then I'm going to have my potato crumb fresh here. Potato crumb fresh, and then there's some chives in this uh, herb bundle here that will finish this whole dish. So how we're going to do this is I like to zap my sauces, especially these cream sauces, because it's actually the easiest way to 
heat them up without breaking them at home. So I'm gonna go into the oven. I'm gonna go into the oven with this. Bada boom. And then I'm gonna go right into this uh, microwave here with this microwave safe container. And we're gonna go two minutes. We'll probably do the exact same thing with the gravy as well here in just a second. Okay. So this is going, so the ham is bubbling. I can hear it in there bubbling right now. We have our, uh, our soup on low, which is great. It's just slowly coming up to, to speed for us. So it looks like she's got this the cocktail. So Look beautiful. at that. Look what she did. Now here, I'll show you how to make these nice little wedges here. This is something that we like to promote at Travail, especially to all of our young chefs in training. We do the old end off until you see the flesh there, and then we quarter it. And then what we like to do is you like to come in at an angle, and just cut through it. Now you'll see there's a couple little seeds that are left over, but then all that's left is that nice flesh, no seeds. We don't want seeds going all over everything. So we like to just put that right on that plate here for you as not only a garnish, but also as something that you can spritz over your, uh, your little uh, shrimpies. So mm. here we go. All right, so are you getting after the cake? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a good cake. Now, mm. oh baby. Oh yeah. I'm gonna eat that today. <laughs> all right, we're gonna put that right here. A couple of layers of mousse and all the good oh things that you love about chocolate cake. The nice little <laughs> glaze over the top. Okay. Let's see here. Couple more of these. Mm -hmm. If they don't open with your hands, cut them open. Here we go. Okay. So what I'll have you do is, so I just want you to take these and make little florets just like that. Okay. It's always nice to have a partner in the kitchen, uh, <laughs> sous chef, if I may. Look at this herb bundle. This is the only other thing that I feel like people will be like, "What in the heck?" So. We're just gonna open it up and separate all the different herbs from each other. So we got green onion. That's gonna go for our uh, soup and for our. Um, so it's this uh, uh, goes with this Brussels sprout. So it's green onion and um, sage for the Brussels sprout. And then we have the makings of fiends herb. Fiends herb is a French um, combination of uh, herbs, which is chervil. Um, parsley, which we have right here, and then chive as well. So we'll reserve some of our chives for the potatoes once we get those going. So I like to, like I said, I like to separate them out like this. And honestly, like, we're giving you kind of the tips of everything here. You can pull some of these stems. If you look at it, some of these stems right here, like just the big ones on the very bottom. But that's pretty much as far as you need to take that. So here we have it. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. So, Sora, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do this. You ready to do this? I'm going to start chopping herbs over here. And you are going to start roasting Brussels sprouts. So, a very liberal amount of oil in the pans is what's ideal. Because you want to basically fry these things in the pan. So, I'm using two pans just to... You know, I like a lot of color on mine, so the more uh, surface area you give them, the more color you'll get. Right now, they're on like kind of like a medium heat. We're gonna turn them up to a real nice heat right here, about a medium high. Okay, okay so we're gonna go right into here, and I like to slide them in. So, so you can start sliding them into this one here. I love Brussels sprouts. They're like little baby cabbages. <laughs> so we're sliding them in on the flush side down. And you're gonna get color on these. That's that's the point of this, okay? And then once we run out of uh, space, that's fine. Don't. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you okay. can. Okay. One can be upside down. I mean, they, it's not that big of a deal. Because you um, can burn yourself. Yeah, because when you stick your finger in hot oil like Roy just did, you might actually burn your finger off. Dear Lord. I took the risk. <laughs> he did take the risk. I love it. So, like I said. You can start smelling that wonderful flavor being roasted onto these bad boys. And honestly, like, oh, you roasted them too far. I don't know. In my book, there's really no such thing. You don't want to burn things, but at the same time, you want color on these things. So um, get all the big ones in there that you can. 
And then um, all these little shaky shake stuff, I like to just kind of throw it in there like so. And then I bada 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 bang. And then a um, little bit of salt and pepper. You can also take some of that potato spice and put it on there too. It's just got a little bit of cumin and a little bit of granulated garlic added to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm just doing salt. Mm. Salt, black pepper. I always have it handy in my kitchen because, you know, we do a lot of cooking around here. The kiddos. So, ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, it might Here's your, oh. Oh. Grab a pan. Yeah, right. All right, ready? <laughs> Look at that color. Here. It's, no, put your hand on there. All right, we're going to the front, okay? okay. okay. No. Jeez! <laughs> I'm not a flipper. You blocked it. You blocked Daddy, it. Our children can do this. I can't. All right. I kind of did it. I like it. I, I like it. You're doing well here. Let me turn this flame off so I can get some of these stragglers. All right. <laughs> You see how, remember how, how much oil I put in there in the beginning? Look at that. It just sucked it all up. Now, you just yeah. put a little bit more oil in there. You hear that high pitch sound? That's the sound you want to hear. Nice and high pitch, right? All right, got a little fire going right now. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so at this point, what I like to do, since I have good color on it and I feel like I have good color, I'll go straight into one pan, like so. I'll dip this pan out of the way, get a little water on there just to chill it out. And then what I like to do is I take that same pan that I put a little water in, and what I do is I put that water right in here. Oh, that's and we're just awesome. gonna steam this out a little bit. Yeah. Now you could easily just use a lid, but you know, I'm kind of like cooking in a kitchen vibes here, so this is kind of what we're doing. But, um, <laughs> you wanna where's my tweezer? <laughs> Here, I got it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got Brussels. Guess what? The next thing we're going to do, mm -hmm. you'll never guess. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the exact same process, mm -hmm. but it's going to be with mushrooms in this pan over here. We're going to let this get nice and hot. You want to check on our potatoes, make sure they're doing all right in there. Mm -hmm. Herb situation here. What I like to do is I like to have a, pan, a plate so that when I chop all this up, I can put them into different piles and I use it just like, like a garnish. Hoo, hoo, hoo. All the little things that we're gonna be uh, completing out here. Um, don't wanna forget about our Brussels sprouts. Oh, very nice. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm looking at it. I don't see any more of that liquid in there. I'm kind of feeling these to see how, how done they are. Oh my God. Again, we're going really liberal on this oil. Do that, those things sucked up oil. Wait till you see what these mushrooms do. Bring them on over here. <laughs> you want the, you don't want them to pile up. You want them to like, like be touching all the little surfaces in there. Let's do the actual potato seasoning on these though. Um, mm. Cause I, I think that would be really good. What's in it? Um, salt and pepper and. Yeah, salt, pepper, a little bit of cumin, a little bit cumin. of, uh, a little bit of a uh, uh, garlic powder. Just gonna put a little of that on there like so. Lovely. Ooh. Just a little bit of salt too. Okay. And a little bit of black pepper. All right, so we gave you some uh, wonderful um, um, herb butter for this. Oh, and good. you'll see that it comes in this little cup here. Easiest way to deal with this is maybe run it. I always run it. I think I, I might be warm enough here to pop it out, but um, I usually run it under warm water. There it is. Boop. And that's going to go into here. What? Sneak in one. <laughs> it's not even ready yet. All right. You want to do this? Oh. Here's another thing. All you right. don't actually have to flip these. You can just go in with the tweezers. Mm -hmm. You can turn your heat up. Mm -hmm. What that's you're looking fine. for is that nice bit of brown color there. You don't want to burn your mushrooms, obviously. Um, but also with these, you don't want to take them too far. Otherwise, they kind of just turn into nothing. They, they, they literally like kind of weep out and become... Uh, uh, very, very small and kind of minuscule. So uh, uh, the tweezers are very handy to have. You can also use the tongs. Um, but really, we're just trying to move these things around in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, we're going to put a little bit more of that oil around the outside. Kind of get those things rolling. There we go. Love it. I... Throw a little more salt on that. Check our ham. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, baby. 
We're gonna need a little bit of water. That's actually kind of perfect right now, but um, it ain't a dinner without Ralph barking at a goose outside. Right? Can I? Just adding a little bit of water here. We kind of got to the caramelization point of that uh, wonderful glaze, and I really want to use that for later. But that's ready to go. I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit. And I'll show you how to plate that up. Okay, these are right where I want them. Okay, like I said, I'm just trying to get a little bit of a roast and kind of a heat through on, on what's going on here. And then we're just going to put, I'm gonna say about a third of this butter in here. And I like to just kind of go spread it out throughout once this melts into those, let's just go with a full half. I love it. Which there is, we go. It's garlic butter, right? Yeah, garlic herb butter. Ooh. It's really going to, I mean, it's like cheating. I mean, it, it, with cooking, we've <laughs> given you the flavor bomb to put into these bad boys. So let's take a little taste. See if we want. Oh, my God. Sell it to the butcher. That is ready to rock. Let's get all these into a bowl. And I always tell people, save these tins because you'll need them. If everyone doesn't eat everything, then you can use them for later and it works out perfectly. Potato creme fresh. Oh my God, thank you for your blessings. Oh my goodness. This is the happiness bus right here. That's what we want to see. So we're just going to cut some of these chives to finish up these potatoes. So with this... Can I help with this maybe? Is there something... Oh, I almost forgot about like the salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helpful. Start busting that open. My bad, my bad. I totally forgot about Mr. Salad. It's just like a little statue sitting there, right? In I can do a salad. What do you got there, babe? <laughs> Show us what you got. All right, cutting this up here. Mm. Lettuce is ready to rock. It's like Looks a hydroponic like that's already been um, nice. already been rinsed and cleaned for you. Mm. You're gonna just take the bottom off of that lettuce, mm -hmm. the butts, if I may. Potatoes. Potatoes, oh my gosh, call it good. Yeah. You can break them up a little bit. So you're gonna get butter lettuce or gem lettuce. We just got as many fresh lettuces from our purveyor as we could. And they're all cooked, they're all kind of created the same way with that really wonderful like um, uh, organic uh, farming technique. And you can tell this is like just mm. a really good green. I like to just kind of rip them in half a little bit and get that going. In here, we have a sherry uh, bacon vinaigrette. That is gonna go with this. We're also getting a shallot and a nice little chunk of Parmesan. So you wanna get a little zester over there. Do it however you want. I like to do, you could dice it and throw it in there, but I like to just shave it as thin as possible. If you have a mandolin, this is that time to bust that out. But this nice shaved onion is one of my faves to do for the um, the salad. Give you some wonderful croutons there. Oh, give that a little sprinkle in there, babe. Here you go. Ooh, that's awesome. Sprinkle it in there. Those We're gonna nice go cuts. after the uh, parsley and the chervil together here. Okay. That onion out of here. Because these fresh herbs are actually gonna go into the salad. Now, normally I would say chop them up as far, as far as you possibly can. But since I'm going into a salad, I'm just gonna run my knife through them. Kind of nice and thin, like a chiffonade. Um, but then I'm gonna just go through the other way and then that's gonna be it. Cause I'm gonna mix that into my salad and it's just gonna add a really nice uh, flavor profile to it as well. <laughs> no. Mail. You ready? Yeah. That's gonna be really good. There you go. There's some of that too. Mm -hmm. Mix your vinaigrette in there as well. And then we're just going to shave this as thin as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. 
And this is going to be a double, uh, double whammy uh, for our, half of it will go with our Brussels sprouts, along with this uh, sage here. And the other half will go with our soup. And let's just be honest, guys, like, the reason we're doing this work is because this is how chefs put things together. You want fresh herbs. When you start cooking with fresh herbs and good seasonings, and compound butters that are all, like, set to be nicely seasoned, and, like, you know, that's when we're actually cooking something that's a little different, you know, for, for the holiday season. So I'll put this right over here. Get that in a nice pile. We'll pick our... Um, It looks like there's a little tarragon in here too. That would go in our fiends herbs as well, the tarragon. Gives it that anise flavor. So does the um, the chervil. So you can either do one or the other or both. Looks like we put both in there. So uh, so you can just pick the leaves off of this and toss it in there. And then once you're done, we're gonna go right in that bowl and we'll shave the cheese right over it, okay? She's from Wisconsin. I like cheese. She's a cheese head. <laughs> okay, once again, rough chop on that, on that uh, uh, sage. Nicely done. Nicely well done, done well. A little sprinkle, dingle, dingle, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle of the sage on here with the Brussels. Well, if it gets a little a little thick on you, because it reduced a little bit, you can always add a little water. Same with the glaze of your ham. If it gets a little thick on you, you can always add a little bit of water um, just to kind of thin it back out. Actually, we're going to plate this now. These wonderful Brussels. Let's do this. We're going to go right on here. Now. Beautiful. Little green onion. Right over the top. Oh, yeah. What is oh, and then okay. the maple bacon. Lovely. Baby. Oh, yeah. And that kind of takes care of all of your needs right there. I'm going to need some more herbs on this bad boy. Like I said, these herbs are really what's going to brighten this up. There's that bacon set for you guys. In my own kitchen, <laughs> I would put this cheese, I would put it on the potatoes, maybe even on the Brussels sprout. Here, <laughs> cheese up those potatoes, even though they look perfectly beautiful they right now. They are beautiful, but this will even, ooh. Cheese on cheese. This will make it even cheese on cheese on cheese on cheese. We're going to get these mushrooms in a pot Tasty. here. Like I said, those shrink up on you, you can I see. Mean, right, like just that adds like, hmm, handy. We're gonna zap our beef sauce now. Oh yeah. And we're just popping this, we're just popping this in the microwave for like a minute and a half, just to warm it up. Let's get this soup working for us. Mm. We're gonna put a little bit of maple syrup in there. With this, since I've reduced it down quite a bit, it doesn't need any acid. It just needs a little bit of salt and a little bit of maple syrup if you have it, or just a little bit of sugar. The thing is, is the soup, as it like kind of cooks on you, seasoning changes just a little bit. Like I said, just a little bit of salt and just a little bit of maple syrup, probably like maybe two, three tea, two, two tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon and a half. It's just enough to like give you that flavor in there. Get a nice little taste here. Oh yeah. We'll just do a couple of these so you guys understand what's going on. And just remember too, the soup, this uh, garnish that's with it. Perfect. The garnish is gonna add some of those flavors too. So candy papitas is gonna add some sweetness. Right? Also some crunch. Some of these pickled cranberries. Gonna add some more of that sweetness as well. And then some freshness from our green onion here. I have some celery. 
Celery is gray salt. It's really a nice salt to have. Uh, we like to hand it out during the holiday season because it goes great with beef. You guys remember that part? We're doing beef, but we're not going to do it until we're done with getting in this ham. Oh my gosh, Ooh, look at that ham. Wow. Like I said. It's caramelized. Oh, baby. I'm going to cut it this way so that everybody gets some of that nice sticky stuff on there. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking it. Good God. Mm. Grab some of these. Wow. Some of this caramelized mm. love here. This is like candy. I want, this is my piece. <laughs> We're just gonna go right over the top. It's like that. Last but not least, guys, you know what time it is. The beef that we showed you in the beginning, the very beginning, that beef is done. And we're gonna pull it out of here. A little TV magic, if I may. It's been resting. Now, what I love about this ham is, or about this beef, is that there is no chewy senu inside of this beef. We've actually taken the time to um, cut this beef uh, open and then put it right back together without any of that silver skin in there. And we have our three little strings that were in here. We're just going to cut those strings. I have to do it with a scissors. I use the scissors kind of as a pincher. And then I pull them away. Just like that. So are you ready for some beef? Oh my god, I'm excited to eat this all of this. This thing started out as a four pounder. It's probably shrunk down to three, but you know what? Just like loss of liquids? Loss of liquids and just roasting. But that don't matter because we're going to cut this bad boy in half. Ooh. <laughs> This rested for about, oh my God, a yes please. <laughs> All right, so, you know, prime ribs, fantastic. <laughs> Just gonna keep on slicing. You may have to get up a hundred. That's dad's cut right there. <laughs> like, crazy. It's like some people are like, oh, I don't know if I like it that dark. It's like, that dark crust is like what makes this the, the oh, best. I love that. I just eat all the And crust. normally there's all chewiness right in here, but this cap is stuck to it now. No chewiness. It's um, all those little parts that you end up leaving on the plate and end up chewing on. We took all those out of there. So, holy bajoli. Leave that dad cut in there. So much beef. <laughs> dad cut. There's a dad cut in there. <laughs> hey, if you're the one carving, Javi and Julie Mom, we're be... All right. So, let's get it all out here in front of us here. Now, the inside is not seasoned like the outside. This is when celery comes in handy. This is literally the salt that is meant for beef. So, I'm just going to get every layer here. Get that little bit of seasoning in there. And then what's left gets to go in your pantry. All right. <laughs> and we did it together. We did it together. And uh, it only took about 30 some minutes, maybe 40, I don't know. 45, 45 minutes. Honestly, the beef process is about a two hour process. And you'll, you'll know that from the beginning of the video here, but um, the reality is, is if you put it through that process, you get a really good result. So thanks again. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And, uh, we're going to do this every year. So we'll see you next time. This. Um, <laughs> Giglio box is next. That's going to be an Italian pasta box. Uh, that's going to oh, be, I'm excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> Story loves pasta. <laughs> so that'll be, uh, the next thing that we do. And that's sometime in February, mid February. So. Later.